the meeting to order. Uh, roll call. Here. Are there any conflict of interest statements? There are none, Mr. Chair. Under correspondence, item A, agreement between the City of Hammond and the City of Whiting and First Group Engineering for engineering services and the road widening and resurfacing of Indianapolis Boulevard from Calumet Avenue to Shrog Avenue. I've uh, reviewed the agreement, and so has our, our city attorney. I'd like to recommend that we approve the agreement. Okay. All in favor? Aye. And 4B. I will hand the gavel over to you. <laughs> like I've been proposed. Next, an agreement between Canopco, formerly known as Lever Brothers, for purchasing real property. This is for the bike trail. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the agreement. Second. All in favor? Aye. Next, AT&T request permission to perform work at 173rd Street in North Cotton. I'll make a motion that we approve the digging request. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And a letter of engagement with Caspera Company for accounting services. The uh, letter, of Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the engagement. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, Chief Miller requests approval of the retirement of Joanne Narcy and approval of Department General Order 1302. I move to approve the retirement and the approval of General Order 1302. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, a few items of correspondence from our fire chief, Jeffrey Smith. First, the approval of the demotion of engineer Joseph Williams to private, effective January 31. Request for the social media policy to be included in the fire department rules and regulations. I move that the uh, demotion of Joe Williams be approved and that the social media policy be adopted into the fire department rules and regulations. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next are quit claim deeds conveying 3038 173rd Street and 7015 Carolina Street to the Hammond Redevelopment Commission. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that these two parcels in the parish subdivision be transferred to the Hammond Redevelopment Commission. <coughs> I'll second your motion. All in favor? Aye. Next, the hearing on 912 Summer Street. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I represent Joe Wittig, who is the uh, owner of that property. It's my understanding that he's gone in and uh, fixed many of the uh, violations that were uh, pointed out, and uh, the property has been inspected. Some additional uh, changes were recommended in the basement, and I understand that he's done that as well. So I, I think we've agreed that if we can get another 30 days, have an inspector come out and uh, just verify all the changes have been made, uh, we should be in good shape with that. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to be set for status for March 14th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for coming. Thank you. 5731 Northcott. We're asking the board to affirm the removal of the bedroom in the basement. Uh, it has been removed by the owner, so we can close this out. I'd like to move that further action at 731 North Cot um, be dismissed. Second. All in favor? Aye. 4834 Ash. I'd like to continue this till March 14th. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. We'll do that by acclamation. Here. Next, 4754 Elm. That also is mine. Uh, let me see. I know my client's intent is to transform it to a single family residence. That's where his mother lives, and the two basement apartments have been abandoned and only one of the first floor apartments is being used now so we're waiting on cost to do that and uh, a time frame for having it done and then I anticipate we'll submit an agreement to the board for its approval 
So if we can get, uh, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks. March 14th. That would be fine. Very good. Next, we have agreed orders for 240 Douglas Street and 814 Summer Street. And those are my client's properties, Glenn Barker. I've gone over on the phone with him. He's supposed to be here. He's coming from Chicago. Uh, he's the only one, I think, that hasn't signed off on him. Is that correct? You want us to defer this a few minutes? Would that be all right? That's fine. Thank you. Next, 6229 Madison. I am asking the board to affirm the removal of a basement apartment with black windows never been registered and no permits. And I've also included the findings in order. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that the findings in order should be removed Thank you. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Next is 7423 Madison. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 1120 Wilcox Street. <coughs> We're asking the board to affirm the removal of the basement apartment. It's already been gutted. It's pretty much complete. <coughs> I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, 20, excuse me, 230 to 232 Hanover Street. The board is asking, or I'm asking for the removal of the basement apartment at 232 Hanover. It is a duplex, but there is a basement apartment. Uh, it's not being used, but it, it could be used uh, at a moment's notice. Your chance to respond, sir. Uh, hi, I'm Goran Spalovich. Uh, my father is Marco, the owner. Um, because of the language barrier and his hearing and his age, obviously, uh, he asked me to speak on his behalf. Um, the, the house, which is built as a duplex, split down the middle, with the basement apartment was built that way. All the plumbing was there, everything was separate, the bathroom, when it was built. <coughs> um, I don't see why he should have to remove it. It's not being rented. He is aware now that he does need to register if he does rent either one of the duplexes or a basement apartment. As of now, as of the last two years, it's been family occupied. Okay, both apartments, the basement is being used as another like bedroom and, you know, family space. So, you know, I'm questioning why is the city, you know, trying to have, have it demolished, you know, have it taken out. I do have a witness to the fact that it was built that way. Um, I tried to find some paperwork, but I haven't been able to find any paperwork as Mr. to... Mr. President, the building department's information on the basement apartment is that there's no fire separation, the electrical is running from the garage to the basement, and it has exposed electrical throughout, and there's a bad seal vent on the hot water tank. So if it was always built that way, it was built that way without power. There are safety concerns, not just... Uh, those are not major safety concerns. It's electrical cord running right to the garage because the city would not approve the electricity be turned on down there when he wanted to turn it on in, in his name because they wanted, they said it was illegal to have an apartment and I explained to them it was built that way. So if it was approved back when it was built by the city, why, you, you know, it's up, the electric is not that old, it's just all minor, you know, to pull some extension cords out of the walls, turn on my electric down there and we'll have power to the garage and to the basement. First, it's the state is that it's, it was built that way, and now that the electric is not that old. Obviously, it was built that way, we'd have fire separation, we'd have its own electrical service. Safety issues, primarily, is, is 
fire separation. If someone was to use that apartment and start a fire, putting the people on the main floor is in danger. We're not disputing the fact that it's built as a duplex. We will dispute the fact that it is a triplex. There is no third unit there. There's no permit for it. Depending on what state we want to build that way, we're likely to be fairly new. Well, I'm no electrician, obviously. I'm, I'm claiming it's still new, 1950s, 1960s. You know, it's not a 100-year-old property in back then. I'm, I'm saying 1950s, 1960s, still the same electrical through there. Um, it does have uh, three exits, actually. It has a back exit. It has two other additional exits that can go through the other units to get out. Um, as far as fire separation, uh, I'm not familiar with that. Is that the ceiling type fire separation? What is that? That's what you're talking about? Well, right now, it's not being rented. It's not planned on being rented, but it is planned to be used as for the family. Um, my father is on a lower income right now, SSI. His wife just passed last year in August. So, you know, it's imperative that he can, you know, possibly rent one of the duplexes upstairs. He's thinking of moving in that basement apartment to live down there and rent the two to subsidize his income. Why can't, why isn't he allowed to do that, may I ask? I'll ask you why, because if he's in the basement and there's no fire separation and there's a fire and our firefighters go in there to try and save either his tenants or himself, it can put them in direct jeopardy and harm and potentially uh, there could be a fatal situation. This has happened in Hammond already okay. with a basement unit that was inhabited by the residents. That's why we do this, okay? okay? It's not to try and preclude your father from uh, obtaining additional income. It's for the safety of the tenants that your father is putting in his structure and for the safety of our firefighters and emergency personnel that may have to respond to that unit, okay? Okay, I understand that. And with today's technology response is fairly, you know, without glitches. I could see older buildings and having issues in those basements and ordeals. But this is a homeowner, it's home, owner-occupied property there. It, I believe it's well taken care of. There's, there's some minor issues for the family to be living there or whatever. I mean, I don't, I don't see why the city is going after homeowners that are owner occupied There's plenty of buildings and, you know, these other landlords that are not taking care of their properties, you know, that are not being even looked at. And I really, I'm... This is upsetting to him at his 81-year-old man, and it's upsetting to me as well to have to, you know, deal with something as simple, which I think is as simple as this. It's owner-occupied, it's family-occupied. There's no public uh, hazard right now. There is a public hazard. If you have an issue and the fire department calls NIPSCO to turn off the power to the house, okay, and your basement unit is currently being powered by the garage, there's obviously an electrical hazard that exists, okay? You have, you, you've stated that there is an electrical hazard that exists, that you have extension cords in the walls. The building department has stated there's an electrical hazard that exists. The city has not approved it to be turned on. It, the unit, the electricity is separate, the gas is separate. It's ready just to be turned on. Here's what, here's what we... That's we, what I'm saying. Kind of, I've kind of gathered from your side of the story and from the building department is you have a duplex. You have two units in that duplex that can be used as habitable space. You have a basement that currently can't be used as habitable space. That's their assertion and you've basically agreed saying yes, there's, there's some issues with the electrical and the water heater. Is that correct? I don't believe there are issues. You don't, so you don't believe there's any issues with the electrical? Or no. Water? Okay. The only case, issue is it's not turned on. Okay. We've run some extensions because the power is off, so we have light in that, in that apartment, so somebody can use the bedroom there. It's not an apartment. You have, it's a duplex. The basement is not an apartment. I'm, or, well, I'm gonna make the motion not, that the findings in order be affirmed. Way, is what I'm saying. It's a family home. I mean, this is not a building of, you know, 10 apartments. It's not a, you know, it's a single family dwelling. It's a duplex. It's a house split down the middle. It was built that way. It's a wall down the middle. And that's a firewall. I, I, I don't know. It doesn't have fire separation. Well, I'm saying it was built that way. I don't basement know. It is a basement, not a unit. 
There's a, there's a motion to approve the order. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so I need to do what? To gut the whole apartment down there? It's not uh, an apartment. Well, it's a duplex. <laughs> it's a basement. It's, it's not an apartment. That's what we just found. It's your basement yep. is not an apartment. If, if something can be done, you need to get it approved by our board. <laughs> okay. All right, so I need to talk with Matt here. Sure. Well, thank you, Council, for your time. If you yeah. help every minute, you can call. All right, I will. Thanks. Yeah. 4720 Cameron. We're submitting the findings in order for the removal of the basement, a second floor apartment and the basement bedroom. Um, Mr. Shreek has not contacted our office in the last 30 days to see what he can do. So we're going to submit the findings in order. Your chance to respond, sir. Uh, there is not a, not a real apartment in the basement. Yeah. A uh, second floor apartment. Uh, it, the the house is a is a two flat, first floor and second floor. And I don't see why that can't be gr grandfather then. You appeared before us about a month ago. Is that correct? Yes. And last month, uh, we agreed to continue your case for a month so that you could get in contact with the building department. Is that correct? Oh uh, yes. Did you get in contact with the building department? Oh uh, yes, I. Talk to uh, 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 Kelly. Uh, 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 yes. Okay. And did the building department apprise you of the actions that would need to be taken to bring your unit into compliance? It, it would be cost prohibitive. Is this Kelly? This is a single family home? Correct. Right. I've I've bought it as a as a two unit uh, quite some time ago. I, I wouldn't have bought it if it weren't a two unit. It's unfortunate that this happens when people are making investments in property. At the same time, it's not as important as someone was dying of fire where um, these houses have been able to get cut up. Um, I can't make our decisions based on effects and monetarily. This is a matter of safety, not only for the tenants, but for the first responders. No fire separation. What, just a single exit? Single service. Single, single, service. single service to the whole building? Yeah. Okay. Based on the fact that we have a single family home, the second floor has been converted into an apartment with a building permit issued, as well as the fact that we have a bedroom uh, which is creating habitable living space in the basement. We make a motion that the findings in order for the removal of those two items be affirmed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 851 Indiana Street. We're submitting the findings in order for the removal of the basement apartment and the second floor apartment. No permits to convert. He will, go ahead. The owner had, the last hearing the owner had supplied some drawings that I gave to Mr. Cook for review. Uh, Mr. Cook reviewed those drawings are incomplete and I left a message for the owner um, who never returned a phone call. Um, this another basement apartment and a second floor cut into two units. Um, the drawings were basically uh, egress, but the issues are much deeper than that. This was the gentleman with the fire separation and egress issue that we required to obtain um, engineering drawings. That's correct. And this gentleman has expended the funds and obtained those engineering drawings, correct? Um, some drawings. Okay. And we just have a communication issue as of right now where. Well, you need Communication and the fact that we're going to need more accurate drawings. Okay. The fact that this gentleman has complied partially with the city of Hammond request and we just haven't been able to get in touch with him, can we continue this for 30 days? 
I have no problem with that. I believe the vacant is, uh, the union is vacant. March 14th, 4730 Cedar. We're asking for the removal of the basement apartment that was illegally installed. A ceiling height of only five foot 11 inches. Forty-two Wido. I'm submitting the findings in order on behalf of Nick for the removal of third floor attic apartment, second floor rear apartment, and a basement apartment. Findings in order uh, be approved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 7613 Monroe. Hello, um, I'm Daniel Appling. This is my wife, Christy. Um, we own the property. Um, we currently rent it, and we are requesting that um, uh, we be forgiven late fees from 2010, 11, and 12, and we didn't know that we had to register the property, and we're not really landlords um, as far as like owning a bunch of properties and everything. We just, my job moved me out of state, and um, yeah, we, we tried to sell the house. We, we couldn't. Single family home? Okay. Yes, sir. Daniel, uh, what's your last name? Uh, Appling. A-P-P-L-I-N-G? Yes, sir. You come all the way up from Alpharetta, Georgia? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. They drove from Georgia. Georgia today for the hearing. Today's my birthday. Yes, Andy, Andy made it on time. I'm 40th birthday. Come from the other side of Hammond. I am feeling real guilty. Yeah. Uh, well, this is the only rental property that you have in Hammond. Yes, period. We, we lived in there five years. Yeah, my yes, husband sir. was in college, and then when he he lost his job here, we had to move out of state, and we were just like, ah. Uh, yes, sir. We don't own any other rental properties at all. Is it occupied now, Mr. Hammond? Is it occupied? Oh, uh, yes, sir. It is. And y'all y'all inspected it this morning as well too. Okay. I'm going to make a motion that the uh, appeal be granted. Thank the you. be waived. Thank you. Um, and that you just register the unit at the regular rate. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, yes, ma'am. We do. <laughs> Nine twenty-two Summer Street. Is anybody here for 922 Summer? All right, Mr. President, this is what I have here. Uh, they were late 2008 to 2012. They've been sent to collections. The second floor apartment's been marked uninhabitable. And the water's been sent to the owner since 2009. I would ask that the appeal be denied. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that the appeal be denied for 922 Summer and the late fee be imposed. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is that Summer Street? Mm -hmm. 1459 Truman. Mr. President, that's an agreement to rehabilitate the property. It's been signed by the property owner. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion that the agreement to rehab the property at 1459 Truman be approved. All in favor? Aye. And just for the record, that was a demolition property. And it's off the demolition list as long as they make the repairs. Next, Mr. Gleason requests approval to have a street sweeper reconditioned. President, this is a request by Mr. Gleason to uh, refurbish a sweet street sweeper and extend the useful life of the asset. I'd like to make a motion that we enter into agreement with the Rehabilitation companies do the same. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, Chief Martin, Purdue University, Calumet Police requests approval for placing signage on 173rd Street between Wood Woodmar and Wicker. Mr. President, that's over there by where the, the gym, when they play basketball is. There was a student that was actually struck by a vehicle, and what they want to do is they want to put a crossing sign uh, there in the middle of the center median. We've already spoken to Gary Gleason, who gave us permission. <coughs> An advance warning sign? Yes. Whatever those the sub, things that look like a sawhorse, look those little stars. look out people crossing here sign. I'd like to make a motion that we approve that subject to it meeting the traffic control device manual because I think there may be an issue with the size of the sign and the width of the median so it doesn't get taken out every time a truck drives by. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, the city council requests that we send a letter concerning a light being out on the 1100 block of Cleveland Street. Is that Mr. Gleason? No, that could be engineering. Uh, it's probably uh, probably a NIPSCO light. Just refer that to engineering. Very good. Next, Mr. Kalwinski requests approval of $12,950 of gaming money for light improvements on Holman Avenue between Goslin and 137. I'd like to make a motion that we approve that transfer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And next, there's a request for a rental registration hearing at 6814 Nevada Court, and we'll say March 14th for that one. Matters from board members. I have one, Mr. President. <coughs> Mr. President, I, I would like to make a motion that we allow temporary lane closures on Hoffman between Johnson and yes. Henry for the demolition of the Queen Anne Candy Building. You made the motion? Mm -hmm. I'll second. All in favor, aye. aye. Any other matters from board members? Yes. I have an agreement here for the sale of water to the city of Hammond from the Hammond Water Works Department. I'd like to make a motion that we approve that. Second. All in favor, aye. aye. Any matters from department heads, new business, old business, public expression? Anyone wishing to address the board, this is your opportunity. It looks like uh, item 11. Actually, we decided to go back to Mr. Matthews. Oh. Yeah, we can do it next week. Or no, we can do it next week. Thank you for the extension. Uh, my client's 20 minutes to a half an hour away uh, with a foster child screaming in his car. So I suggested if we can postpone this to the 28th. I've got to be here for another matter anyway. He will come to my office the beginning of this coming week. If I can keep the paperwork, sign it so everything is signed, and we'll submit it on the 28th. Just go ahead and do it under public expression. Does that work? That's fine. Yeah, he was just supposed to get it to me. Okay, so I'll hold on to him then. Okay. Uh, if I might, uh, I was just addressing uh, a matter with Ms. Cantar, that a uh, settlement agreement that had been worked out with regard to a property at uh, 1020 Myrtle Avenue. Um, we've agreed to enter into a covenant of use uh, restriction, get that recorded such that this property will only be used as a single family uh, occupancy. I, I gather it was one of these divided properties, again, that, that needed to be single family. and. No, I said, Mr. President, I have reviewed this, Jimmy Driscoll, and I were sending it back and forth. And Kurt Cook approves of it. I was just waiting for a signed copy, and it just arrived now. What's the address? 1020 Myrtle. I'm going to make the motion that uh, the restrictive use covenant for 1020 Myrtle be approved. And we do have signed copies, Mr. President, for the board. Can I ask who the owner of that property is? Uh, Juan Ruiz, R-U-I-Z. Can I give them a copy? Yeah. Give them a couple of signatures. And then once this is signed and approved, it'll be recorded on the property. All in favor? Aye. 
We're thank you. Item 11. Okay. All in favor? No.